Wasn't last night. No, it wasn't. Yeah. Think we could turn up the heat? I just did. Give it a chance to warm up. Here. In the meantime, have some coffee. That'll make you feel better. I know what'll make me feel better. It's not the coffee. Yes, it is. Because your eyes are blurry and mouth is dry, and you have a headache. How do you know I have a headache? Because those are always the symptoms when you have a hangover. Your eyes are blurry, your mouth is dry, and you have a headache, not to mention a lousy disposition. I have a charming disposition today. I am ecstatic, I'm wonderful, and I'm, I'm handsome, and I'm content, and it's all due to the attention that my lovely, sexy, voluptuous wife has given me. Can I tell you something? Sure, what? Well, last night, when you were drunk, I told you you were adorable. However, in the cold, clear, hungover light of day, I still think you're adorable. Really? <laughs> in spite of my bleary eyes and my dry mouth? Well, I don't know what to do about your blurry eyes, but I have a good idea what to do about your mouth. <clears throat> well. Hello? Oh. Uh, it looks like the gatehouse. It smells like the gatehouse. Why, well, I think it is the gatehouse. And you did abandon it last night, remember? Oh, uh, what is this, a uh, squatter's right? You know what I s said last night about us being friends? I'm, I'm glad to see it's still true. Pal's a pal. No matter what. Make yourself at home. What does he mean by a pal's a pal? Well, we had a reconciliation of sorts. Excuse me, but uh, it seems to me a reconciliation means you have to be friends and then have something that... I have a fight or something and then make up. I... I don't remember you two being friends. Well, we never really... we never really knew each other, really. <laughs> you are incredible. Mortal enemies, then you get drunk together and you're buddies for life. You wouldn't understand, Monica. Oh, don't give me that one. No, really, Come no. I'm listen, you got you to gotta try to understand that, <gasps> that men have the same kind of miseries as women do, and sometimes it takes getting drunk to find that out, and then along the way you realize it takes so much effort to fight, it's easier to be friends sometimes. Kind of like us, huh? You got to admit, last night was very special, friend. It was very special, friend. I would just hate to think that we could never fight again. Oh, we'll work that out. Don't worry. Oh, thank you. What a relief. Well, I think that we better pack up our tents and we better go because I sure don't want to be here again when he comes down. Yep, back to the world of reality. You on the morning shift today, too? Uh, late morning shift. I don't have any appointments until noon. Me either, which is going to give me time very nicely to look in on Alan Jr. and Jason. Listen, you have not forgotten about Alan Jr.'s birthday. No. Got to do something special. You know what? He's due for a couple of more little cars on his train. And, I, and by the way, I saw the latest, the latest engine for his train. Now, would you mind very much if I laid just a little bit more track in the living room this year? Come on, are you kidding? The children will love it. The children? That would really be wonderful, Monica, if you allowed Jason to share in the holidays. Um... Look, that was just uh, a slip. That doesn't necessarily mean anything. Yeah, but I mean, maybe you're self-conscious, Mark. Uh, no. No, you see, I opened my mouth, and the wrong thing fell out. Now, don't make a big deal out of it, okay? No, Monica, I'm just hoping against all hope, maybe. That... No, uh, well, you're... go ahead and hope. In fact, uh, if you're hoping so much, why don't you just hope that you can get this necklace on me, okay? Here you go. Hold your hair up. I'm now hold right. it up. Thank you. Anything for you. Anything? Within reason. How about the Avalon stock investment? How about it? You know what? I'm in such a good humor. You could probably talk me into anything. Probably, shall we go? Yeah, you bet. <laughs> Clear ahead, goody. 
Why? Well, now I can ask you all the questions I asked you last night and see if they still the same answers today. Save your breath. Anything that I said in the throes of drunkenness, passion, or whatever still count. Oh, well, how generous of you. Uh-oh, what did I give away? Well, I will let you know when the time's right. Oh, dear, now you got me worried, Monica. Oh, come on, I'm only kidding. Said the same thing you always say. You promised undying devotion and how much you love me. It's the same thing you always say when you're drunk. And of course you didn't take me seriously, did you? <laughs> you're kidding. It's always a good giggle. <laughs> Dr. And Mrs. Quartermain, you're up. Yeah. Well, I didn't save you any breakfast. When I knocked on your door and you didn't answer, I just assumed you'd gone to the hospital. Earplugs, Stella. Earplugs. It's the only way you can Good. get a whole night's sleep in this house. Oh, I'm so sorry. Next time, tell me and I won't disturb you. Oh, don't you worry about it, Stella. Uh, next time, there won't be a next time. You just knock all you want to and we promise we'll answer. <laughs> oh, I thought I heard voices. Good morning, Mother. Well, you two were certainly up late this morning. I'll assume that that means you had a good sleep. Wonderful. Like babies. Oh, I bet Mrs. Quartermain wishes she could say the same thing. Oh, voila. You had a bad night? Ah, oh, just a little tossing and turning, dear. Nothing to be alarmed about. She's worrying about your father. Oh, now, Stella, I told you we didn't want to talk about it. Father? She's, she's been a basket case. That's ridiculous, Mother. Father is safe and sound in his office in London. He's not? I tried calling his office twice yesterday. Mm, and twice this morning. Well, somebody had to answer. Well, I talked to both the receptionist and his secretary. Neither of them have the foggiest of ideas where he is. I'm afraid, Alan, that quite literally, your father has vanished. We all know you can afford to buy your own spa, but this is very interesting. He must have read my mind. I wasn't trying to. No, I just said, uh, we have been thinking of investing, in, at least in part, with one of the spas. Sounds like a good idea, doesn't it, darling? No comment. Jesse, I'm expecting a call from England. If I get it, will you please put it through? I'll be in a clinic meeting. Thank oh, you. Sure. You guys are really thinking of investing in that? Oh, I'm working on it. Then you read the article in the paper this morning? What article? I haven't even, uh, as a matter of fact, I haven't seen a paper this morning. Well, there's one right here. Oh, right there. Me and Jess, Mrs. Brewer. Oh, yeah, yes. Yes, hold on. Alan, you call from England. Oh, Orderly. thanks very much, Jesse. Hello? Father? Where are you? Mother is worried sick, aside from being suspicious. You're where? What are you doing in Brighton in the dead of winter? Are you serious? This is a disaster. I know you realize it. I'm just beginning to. Listen, you are going to have to phone me every day if necessary. I've got to know exactly where you are and what's going on. Okay. All right, thanks, Mother. Bye-bye. Unbelievable. I'll say it is. Look, you, you've got to see this. Alan, you've got to see I'll get this right back to you, Amy. It's all yours. Monica, you've got to listen to me. No, no, no. You have to listen to me first. Look. Look at this. They are sending the president of Avalon, of the door of... Uh, Sharp or something like that. I don't know. She's sending a, a, a assistant here to, to acquaint everybody with what's going on. Alan, this is our chance right now. Monica, will you stop thinking about that damn spot oh, for two seconds? We have got real problems. I am. Does this have something to do with Edward's call? It certainly does. Oh. He can't find Beatrice, Monica. He had traced her from Knightsbridge all the way to Brighton, and she's not there. Okay, then it's a dead end. It's not a dead end. She left a following address. That's where he, he just phoned me from the train station. He's on his way to Bath. Bath. Two thousand year old natural spa. Do you realize that? Will you knock it off and stop making jokes about that stupid thing. Hey, Monica, my father is in a panic. So are you, and I wish you'd pull yourself together. I am not going to be able to pull myself together until he finds that woman. Listen, I got to tell you something. I think I'm almost certain that woman is bent on destroying this family. And I am certain that as long as this woman is not in Port Charles, we are all safe. How do we know that Port Charles is not her next stop? What would we do then? What brings you here? Brian's out. Oh, wait a minute. I know where Brian is. You're the one I need to talk to. 